Well, guys, uh, well, Boris, I, I suppose, uh, Leon, how long have been, have, um, I didn't know we were, we, we added uh, Dimension X to the schedule, though. Oh, yeah. The commander uh, wanted to get back to that, to that series for quite some time, guys. Guys, um, and so since the first episode, since it was the first video he did for, for, for the, for the site, I see. Yeah, well, he particularly wants to react to. Well, it's it is called the Outer Limits. I see. <coughs> anyway, um, are you alright, Bendy? Yeah, I'm just trying to deal with some 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 hay fever right now. All right. Anyway, do you guys know? All right then. Anyway, uh, do you know where where Jack is? He said he was gonna. I'm, uh, the commander was, uh, was, was looking for him. He's supposed to be on the planet right down, right now. Uh, helping them out. Yeah, he, I, he's actually said he's actually looking, he's been looking for you. He's in the crew court, he's in the crew's court down below. Alright then. Well, you guys better get to it. I'm gonna, I'll go talk to Jack. See what's going on here. Alright, ready Boris? I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome back to Science Month. I'm Bendy, and I'm Boris. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be reacting to who, Dimension X. The name of the episode is, our, as Leah mentioned, is The Outer Limits. The link will be in the description down below. And by the way, before I begin, Outer Lim the Dimension X is owned by the NBC Broadcasting Company. And please support the official release. And with that said, guys, let's get started. Cambot? Let's start. Adventures in time in and space. space. Told in future. Hence. X. Exactly why. Right. And we won't be able to ask 
ask you. Let us know before you pull every switch. Before you do anything. You got that? Yeah. Even if you only have to blow your nose. All right, get those fuel lines away. Okay, Mr. Crow. Okay. Well, I guess that's about all, Steve. Yeah, that reminds me. Look, if Mary calls, I'm just up on a milk run. I didn't tell her today was it. How is she? It's okay, but she's due about now, and I don't want her to be nervous. Hey, I didn't know the baby was that close. Yeah. Steve, I, I really ought to be sending a single man on this job. What, and cut me out of a soft paycheck? Forget it, eh? You know, you can't get anybody else who can take 15 G's acceleration when those rockets cut in. Yeah, I know. It's time, Steve. Yeah. Well, see you later. Don't worry, Hank. I'll sweat for both of us. Mm. Button her up, Shelly. So long, Hank. So long. We'll give you the life from control. Oh, dear. I'm ready to go. Mr. Hanson. Ready on radar, Sergeant? Yes. Mr. Hanson, you better see this. What is it, Elsa? Message sent it for Steve. Mrs. Weston just left for the hospital. What? Hello, Steve. Yeah. Stand by a minute. Shall we hold the takeoff, Mr. Hanson? What? Oh, yes. Uh, no, wait, wait just a minute. It's, uh, it's too late now. You going to tell him? Maybe he's got enough to worry about. Hey, what's holding us up, Hank? Something on your mind? No, no, it's, uh, it's nothing, Steve. <coughs> I just want to say good luck. Clear for takeoff, Charlie? Right. Okay, give him the light. There he is. There it goes. All right, Steve, I'm reading you clear. I'm at 40,000. Airspeed 600. She's running fine. Soundproofing works. Steve. Hello, Steve. Good God. It's 
gone. Yeah. Oh no. Don't go off tonight. What are you talking about? Straighten out, Steve. Where have you been for the last ten hours? Listen, Hank, there's something more. Come on, come on. I've got to get a report on the screen to Washington, so let's have it. I've got to know how you stretch ten minutes fuel to keep you in the air for ten hours. Now, one thing before I talk. Look, Steve. Have the Geiger men run over the ship before they refuel. What'd you run into? So help me, Hank, I don't know. We better check and make sure it isn't radioactive. Elsie, add a Geiger report on the standard check. Steve, maybe we better have the doc look you over, too. No, no, I'll be all right. They said I'd be all right. They? Look, son, I know you've had a tough time, but we've had this field on the alert for 10 hours. One of the Army boys cracked up looking for you, and he's hurt bad. So let's have the story. Let's have it straight. I don't know how to tell you. Hank, I saw something up there at 300 miles. I chased something up there, Hank. And I caught it. Now, don't have me that. Listen, Steve. I was cruising along, just starting the right bank, when I spotted something. It must have been going about half my speed. It was egg-shaped and smooth. I made a pass at it, and I was coming back for another, and then there was a humming sound. A humming? A sort of vibration. And I blacked out. I was headed straight for it at 4,400 miles an hour. I thought it was going to be the biggest smash since Hiroshima, and... I guess they were drinking that bottle. Never mind that, Steve. What happened? came to inside their ship. Uh-huh. Steve, this whole thing has been a devil of a strain on you. I'm going to call Major Donaldson from the Army base. Ask him to sit in. Psychiatrist? Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Let him run his tests. He'll tell you I'm not kidding. Because, Hank, unless I miss my guess, I've just been kicked off to the way the world ends. <laughs> Yeah. All right, the 
Mr. Weston, suppose you continue your story. Yes, let's have it, Steve. You woke up inside the ship? Yes, and the uh, place was jammed with machinery. Dials, blinkers. I couldn't recognize anything. And you were surrounded by these men from Mars? I didn't say anything about men from Mars. I didn't even say they were men. I couldn't see them clearly. They were just there. Where did they come from then? Another galaxy. Millions of miles outside of our solar system. That's all I know. You figure out where they came from. And they came all that distance to find the Earth? Yes. Did they tell you that? Yes. You mean they spoke English to you? No, no, they didn't. It's funny. I hadn't thought. They didn't really speak to me at all. They just planted the thoughts in my mind. You mean thought transference, telepathy? Yes, that's right. Was hmm. Brought them here. Amazing. We did, Hank. We rang their bell. We brought them in. How? With our atomic explosions. Hank, that's why you've got to stop that bomb test tonight. <sighs> I'll give up. Look, you've got to believe me, Hank. Oh, how can I make you understand? Maybe I can help, Mr. West. Would you submit to narcosychometry? What's that? Under proper drugs, I can put you back in this uh, ship. By suggestion. Then we can get a playback record of your memory pattern on the audio circuit. How long will that take? Half an hour. We'll have to go to the lab. Will you believe me if it checks? It will give us an accurate memory picture of what your mind reports. All right, let's go. Hank, you got to believe me. We haven't got much time. Okay. You should be getting drowsy now. Count backwards from ten. Nine. Attach the head plate electrodes. Cortical pickup. Look out for that wire. Real setting. Thirty-one point three. Although that switch was the hands. Hmm. I have to start him off by suggestion. All right, Steve. Bring your ship down. You're in the rocket. And you've just sighted something strange. Oh, I'm starting at three degree right. What's that? Hey, there's something up there. Something shiny. His memory pad. They're picking it up electronically. There's something above me, Hank. I'm going to chase it. It's tied through the audio sensors. I'm getting static. I can't hear you, Hank. This is where we lost contact with him. I'm going to make a pass at it. And... Hey, it's swerving to meet me. It's dead ahead now. It's dead ahead. This is where he blacked out. There's no telling how long minutes or hours. What's that noise? I don't know. Where? How did I get in here? What? Who are you? Is he seen? Intergalactic patrol. What's that? What are they saying? <coughs> around the world in micro 
Oh no. That's the end. Yeah. Wait, wait. Yes. Yes. I understand. I've got to bring back the warning. You're going to put me back in my ship to bring the warning. Now what? Blacked out again. I guess that's all. What does all that mean? It's what he remembers. Don't think that really happened. No, no. Now, because the commentary circuits produced what he remembers. It just means that Steve believes this happened. I don't like to see this. I've seen too many top pilots snap. Steve is the best I've known. How bad do you think he is? Frankly, outside of the presence of this well-organized this hallucination, there's no sign of unbalance. May not be too serious. If he had a more plausible story, I'd be inclined to believe him. Why? Hank, it's all right, boy. Did you hear it, Hank? You understand? Sure, sure. We've, we've been quarantined. Now let me give you something to make you sleep, Steve. Don't you understand? They fixed it so that if we set off one more nuclear explosion, that'll be it. Of course. Don't go to sleep down. You don't believe me. Now, take it easy, Steve. I've been pest tonight. They're setting off the CR bomb. Hank, what time is it? Well, it's scheduled for midnight. Hank, we've got to stop that bomb. Steve, let Donaldson give you the hypo. Hank, you've got to believe me. I saw them. I got the warning. If we touch off that bomb tonight, it'll be the biggest galactic 4th of July of all oh, time. Dear. The whole Earth will go up like a Roman candle. April 10th, 1965, the end. Now, look, Steve, you better calm down. Don't you want to see Mary and the baby? You've got a new son, remember? Yeah, that's just it. I want to see my son. I want him to live. If that bomb goes off, Hank, we've got to stop him, Mr. Hanson. I think we'd better get over to the base house. Hank, you've got to believe yeah, me. Yeah, sure, sure, Steve. Maybe there is something to it. Look, it's out of your hands. I'll put it in a report and shove it into Washington in the morning. In the morning? There isn't going to be any morning, Hank. Don't you understand? You've got to call Washington now. Get the head of the security commission and postpone that test. Now, you know I can't do that, Steve. My neck would be out a mile. Besides, this is 1965, not 45. Twenty countries have atomic bombs now. But, yeah. We're just stopping just this one. The rest will keep right on popping the world. We'll have to call an international conference. Can't you understand, Hank? The first one that goes off finishes us at the end. They've given us the quarantine warning. Steve, I think you'd better go with us to the base hospital. But look, Steve. We can call up for a detail if we have to. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll go with it. You. you don't need a straight jacket. That's the way, Steve. You'll probably feel better by morning. Let's go. Dear. Well, Steve, tomorrow I'll drive you over to the hospital to see Mary and the kid. Sure. Look at the ship under the floodlights. Pretty, huh? You'll be flying her again soon, don't you worry. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, what you doing out in the line? They, uh, refueling? Yeah, we got Clausewitz coming in tomorrow from Denver for another test. Figure we give you a day off. That's good. That's fine. Steve, Steve, come back. Come on, Donald. Steve, Steve, wait. He's heading for the rocket. Look, there he goes up. You can't get at him now. That covers armor glass. He's waving. Yeah, towards control. Oh, it's the radio. He needs the radio. Come on. I should have gotten hell. Okay. Oh, the radio still looks up here. Hello. Hello, Steve. Listen to me, Hank. You gotta call Washington now. Come out of that rocket, Steve. I'll call my men. Don't Hank. try anything, Hank. They refuel the rocket for tomorrow. Take it easy, Steve. Listen, you know what'll happen when I fire the rocket tubes down here? Steve, don't. It'll burn out every building for five miles. All of us in one big blast. Steve, what do you want? You've got to stop that bomb. You've got to call Washington right now. They won't believe me. If you make that call or I cut in the rocket. Now, I mean it, Hank. I hook my screen to yours in parallel. I want to see exactly what you're doing. All right, all right. Just don't fire those rockets. Get going, Hank. I don't know. Up to now, I'd almost say it was normal, but now he's liable to do anything, Hanson. Steve, Steve, there, are you getting it on your screen? Yeah. Now put that call through. All right. Officer, Hanson, Steve Clausewitz in Washington. Hanson, Steve, Clausewitz in Washington. Yeah, right. 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 Clausewitz in Washington
Steve, I'm trying. I'm ready to take your call, sir. Uh, Washington, Security Commission 3, this is urgent. I want Undersecretary Herbert Ames. Washington 3, one moment, please. Hurry, will you? One moment, please. What time is it, Donald? 11.51. Do you think you'll fire those rockets? You might. Washington? This is screen 3, Mr. Herbert Ames, please. That is a coded exchange. I cannot accept your call without clearance. Get it through, Hank. Listen, Washington, put it through. This is Mr. Hansen at San Marco Air Base. This is a priority call. I'm coded. One moment, please. I will check your code number. Get that through, Hank, and that bomb goes off at 12. Will you be reasonable, Steve? Your call has cleared, San Marco. Washington, this is screen 3. Herbert Ames, please. Security Commissioner yeah. Ames. Commissioner Ames. Hold on. Ames, you've got to get me to the chief. Are you kidding? Is it the test control room? Yes, I know, but get him for me. What's up? You look lousy. Or is it a bad circuit? There's no time. I've got to get him before the test. It's about the CR bomb. I can't take that responsibility. Get that through, Hank. Right plan. Hey, what's going on there? Ames, my project has a high enough rating. This was a priority A call. What? Okay, it's your neck. I'll try to get him for you. He's in the control room, so you'll have to switch off your screen and speaker and go on earphones. Too much going on in there. You hear that, Steve? I've got, I've got to cut the incoming screen. All right. Don't try anything. Eight minutes, Hank. Hello? Hello? What? You got him, Hank? Yes. This, this is Hanson to San Marco. No, sir. Priority A request to cancel the bomb test. No, no. I'm serious. This is deadly serious. We sent the X-2 JTR up today to the outer limit. We uncovered evidence. Yes, on the automatic instruments. What's that? No possible chain reaction. No, I, I can't tell you the whole story. There isn't time here. Yes, yes, I, I'll bring the readings into Washington in the morning. You've got to postpone the test till you see them. Look, I've worked on contracts with the commission for 10 years. Yes, yes, I have complete confidence in my information. You can record that. All right, I, I'll call you back immediately. Bye. He's agreed to cancel, Steve. The bomb won't go off. Yeah. All right, boy. You can come down out of that ship. Yeah, yeah. He's opening up. Here he comes. Scared. He's in the hearts all over. The bomb won't go off. Thank God. Look, uh, I want to see Mary and the baby. Can you get me transportation now? Oh, wait a minute. It's almost 12. They won't let you in the hospital now. I want to see the baby. Sure you do, but you've been under the strain. I've got a mm. shot for you here, Steve. Give you a good night's sleep. All right. Roll up your sleeve. Yeah, here. Sergeant will find you a bed. Yes, sir. Come on, Mr. Weston. Okay. Good night, Hank. I'm kind of beat. It's been a tough night. It sure has. I thought for a minute he was going to blast those rockets and send us all to Kingdom Come. Yeah. Quite a stunt getting the ray bomb test called off. It isn't called off. The chief said... Ames couldn't get the chief. I was talking to a dead circuit. Bomb goes off in a couple of minutes. Oh. Oh, no. Steve. Was one of the best. He was the best. One in ten million. Some story of this poor guy. For a while, he almost had me believe in that quarantine. That's a very common delusion. End of the world. Ah, it's a nice night. Never saw the stars so bright. We better be getting in. That wind is cold. Well, the bomb goes off in 30 seconds. Poor Steve. You know, Hanson, there's just one thing. Yeah? It's outside my field, but I'm curious. How did he keep that ship in the air for 10 hours? With only... Ten minutes fuel. Mm. 
Well, that guys, that was the Dimension X, The Outer Limit. I'm going to be honest, guys, I thought this was an awesome episode. and really uh, kept, kept me at my edge of my seat. What do you think, Boris? I think so, too. Well, guys, I think to, next time, guys, we're going to be going back to Fallout, the Fallout Storyteller. Episode, we're, start, we're starting at the beginning of, I think, The Great Vault. I, that'll be gr and. And we we'll hope to see you guys next time, guys. Till then, I'm Boris, and uh, I'm I'm. And, uh, you mean you're Bendy? Don't forget. All right, sorry. Hey, um, that's Boris. I'm Bendy. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. See ya, Commander. You want to see me, Jack? What are you do doing here? You're supposed to be on the planet with. With with our with our allies, with 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 command with the commander and Jack and Joe are on there. Leon, I want answers. Answer? What do you mean? Don't don't hide it, Leon. I want answers. There's it's just what. What happened what happened to Winston Jr? What happened to Rapid Gamer?